wrap up the coverage of our teams in the East with Western Kentucky. And joining us now is the coach in his second year, Mike Sanford. Mike, good to have you with us, Great buddy. Great to see you, Ron. Joined by a couple of players as usual. Lucky Jackson is with us. Had 93-yard touchdown reception versus Middle Tennessee last season. Also, Andre Ferris, the defensive back, is senior. Good to have you with us, gentlemen. Yes, Mike, sir. I want to go to you because every young coach I've talked to, there's a big jump just like players between their freshman and sophomore year for a head coach. Do you feel there's a big jump for you this season? I really do. I think just knowing our players, knowing these guys uh, that are sitting here to my left and, and them knowing us, knowing this new coaching staff, I think it was very apparent in year one um, that you can't just snap your fingers and everything just, just comes together overnight. Mm -hmm. it, it takes time. you got to marinate those relationships, and your players uh, have to learn what we're about and what our expectations are. Uh, but we also have to learn you know, what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are, and, uh, and, and how that ties into play calling uh, because you have to call uh, plays to your strengths, and you also have to be aware of your deficiencies. And I, I think we're just in such a better place going into year two uh, liking it a little bit to my wife, uh, <laughs> Anne, Anne Marie, who's moved 11 times in this profession of being a, a college coach's wife. And, um, you know, really in her first year uh, of moving to a new place, she doesn't necessarily have the, the meaningful friendships. But here we are in Bowling Green in year two, and she's got a, uh, you know, just a village full of friends uh, that, that really have her back. I think the same thing holds true with, oh, yeah. with, uh, with a football team. And, and those relationships are starting to get more meaningful, more significant, more natural. Well, you mentioned the play calling because you and I were talking a little bit ago about being more hands on offensively this season than you were last season. Will you be calling plays? I will, uh, and, and it's going to be uh, – I, I love doing it. Uh, it's something that I've enjoyed doing. I had a chance to go through uh, spring football uh, and do that during the spring, and uh, I, thought, I thought, you know, offensively it, it was, it was – uh, it was a really good good spring in terms of growth and uh, really had a chance to enhance some of our schemes as well. Now, you, you're, you're missing your quarterback from last year, record-setting quarterback, outstanding all-conference USA performer. We can go over to the Cowboys practice field, see if he has a year eligibility left uh, if you want. Oh, no, no question. <laughs> I wouldn't mind having him spin it around a little bit more. But, there you go. Uh, man, we're so proud of Mike. Uh, I know these guys here, uh, I got to know Mike really well and, um, you know, l lucky – Caught a few uh, deep ones from him, um, but uh, I, th I think as you talk to, to, to our players, uh, I think there's a lot of confidence in the quarterback position, uh, and and not we don't plan on taking a step back of that position. Uh, Drew Eccles, a fifth-year senior, uh, he is uh, a testament to me uh, to what a Western Kentucky Hilltopper is all about. Um, he's backed up Brandon Dowdy, he's mm -hmm. backed up Mike White, and here he is in his fifth year with the opportunity to go and, and start and open up the season at Wisconsin. If you're from Florida, you have a good chance of playing at Western Kentucky a quarterback because the last three quarterbacks at Western Kentucky have been from Florida. And Mr. Eccles is no different. It's a, it's a the, the sun <laughs> the Sunshine State always yeah, good weather go. to spin the football around. So I, I want to talk about this too because I, I go back and look what you've done. Your first recruiting class, which is always the hardest because you're coming into a new situation, was outstanding. You've actually surpassed it with the recruiting class this season. You've got some pretty good players coming in. We do, and, and what I love is, is uh, these upperclassmen. Uh, Dre Ferris is a great, mm -hmm. uh, great example of that. We have we have ten seniors uh, on our roster, wow. uh, which which to me is not a. Uh, it, it's more of a testament to those 10 warriors uh, that have battled through coaching changes, battled through adversity. Um, there's 10, 10 strong uh, warrior types that are going to carry us this year. You bring in some young freshmen to learn from them, uh, and, and you bring in players that have been well evaluated by a coaching staff that is completely dedicated to evaluating players. And, and I think you have a really exciting 2018, 2019, and beyond. Now, the one thing I would have to say when I look at the numbers that has to improve is your running game because your leading rusher had only 373 yards. Has that been a point of emphasis, or is that okay to have only 373? No, we, we want to run the football. Uh, championship teams run the football. Uh, we're going to run the football. Now, uh, we had to go back to the drawing board as coaches, uh, look at what we did, look at what, what I did as the head mm -hmm. coach in implementing the run game, and, uh, and we, we've really enhanced the run game, changed up. We studied a lot of teams, uh, went back to the drawing board, and we also figured out some schemes that fit mm -hmm. Uh, the strengths of our of our players, uh, the strength of our quarterback position, uh, you know, and also you know some speed that we can get on the perimeter. Do you try to get a little mobility at quarterback? Absolutely, that, that's something that I'm always looking for in evaluating the position. Uh, I truly believe that the, the quarterback position has to give you three first downs a game with their legs. Period. The quarterback position has got to take off and hold the defense accountable because otherwise it just turns into pass rush drill the entire game. Uh, Drew Eccles can run the football. Um, 
Stephen Duncan can run the football. Mm -hmm. Davis Shanley certainly can run the football in this incoming freshman quarterback, Kivaris Thomas. Uh, he's going to have some defenders bouncing off him at some point in time here in the near future. Well, we got a couple of additions to the coaching staff. I see one of the big ones in my eyes is T.J. Woods was at Oklahoma at, at uh, Oregon State in Wisconsin, the new offensive line coach. Was there a deficiency on the offensive line last season? Uh, you know, I think we had to replace uh, two outstanding tackles from the 2016 mm -hmm. season, Daryl Williams and Forrest Lamp, and then a center in Max Halpin that was really the leader of the group. And that's, you know, that's your bookends and sure. your guy down the middle. Um, you know, and so that no matter what, we're going to have a challenge there. But um, that the growth of that unit, it, it, I really do believe, is watching the, the offensive line work out this summer, um, they eat weights for breakfast. Uh, they do. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's what we want. Line. Yeah, they do. They because you've got a new strength coach, too. We've we got do. to talk about him, too. Yeah, and, and between T.J. Woods, uh, you know, his pedigree as, as the new offensive line coach, he's a, he's a high-level Power 5 offensive line coach, and we have him at Western Kentucky. Uh, you know, Jason Veltkamp, our new strength coach, has, has been the strength coach that has led – three different teams, three different programs to New Year's Six or BCS wow. Bowl games. He was a head strength coach for Urban Meyer at Utah in 2003, uh, went to the Fiesta Bowl. Uh, he was a head strength coach for Bobby Petrino, both at Louisville, uh, and, uh, and then went on to Arkansas with him. And uh, his pedigree is second to none. And these players, uh, they feel fresh, they feel healthy, and they feel loose, uh, ready to attack this year. All right, Lucky, let's talk to you, my man. You finished with 39 receptions last season. What's it like not having Mike back there to throw footballs to you? Uh, Mike's a great guy, great quarterback, but uh, not taking anything from Drew. Uh, he comes in, puts in a lot of work. Uh, we throw at crazy times uh, just to build that chemistry. Uh, like uh, the other night we called Coach uh, so we could get the lights on. I think it was 930 on a Saturday night. <laughs> I and, like I mean, that. He, he was pumped up. I mean, he got uh, the maintenance out there. He was like, man, I'll make some calls just to get the lights on for us. We had campus police come out. Yeah. Oh, I, I, and I, I call, I'll never, so I called uh, campus police <laughs> and said, guys, listen. This is one of the best phone calls I've ever made. <laughs> I go, I, I, I'm, I'm on vacation with my family right now, so I can't physically get over there. Yeah. Okay, but uh, Lucky Jackson and uh, Drew Eccles, they are begging to go out and throw at 945 on a Saturday Jeez. night in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, they, I had chills. I'm not going to lie. Uh, a, That's a, 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 a tear did, did come <laughs> drop down my eye, man. That was all, <laughs> all my years, Mike. I've never at 945 on a Saturday? Yeah. No. Campus police. Literally, I'm like, hey, guys. Let them in. This is going to be a weird That's deal, good. but these guys want to throw. They need the stadium lights put on. So we got campus police. We got maintenance out there. It was, it was awesome. I'm so proud of these guys, the work that they're putting in on their own. Well, you have summer. to because you lost three of your top four wide receivers last season. That has to present a good challenge to you and the rest of the guys, correct? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, definitely looking forward to the challenge. Uh, it's nothing that I can't do or the guys with me in my room that can't do. Uh, I look to lead, lead some of those younger guys in the, in the room with me and uh, – they always look up to me. I'm that crutch that they can lean on. Uh, they can, I can look to my left and my right, and they'll do the same for me. Well, you look at your deep defense. I, I think when I break it down, it not only has depth and talent, but I think it could be one of the strengths of your team. Oh, there's, there's no question. That's a, that's a group that's, that's returning and it's healthy. That's yep, the thing. I, exactly. We were uh, towards the end of the last season. We were, we were the walking wounded. Uh, by the time we played Vanderbilt. <laughs> Uh, man, we were just holding it together uh, by a thread, and, and <laughs> these guys, these guys battled. Uh, they did because physically they weren't, they weren't feeling, uh, you know, exactly up to 100 percent. So uh, I think going into this year, just uh, the body types we have on defense, the athleticism. Uh, I think our secondary, our linebackers. There's a lot of speed. Um, it, it's going to be a fun group to watch. We got a great defensive coordinator, Clayton White. Calls Absolutely. a great game. Uh, he's a great coach. He's a great developer of men. Uh, and and I, I look forward to, to just a great defense in, in 2018. Do you have to generate more of a pass rush, though? We do. Um, you know, D'Angelo Malone is a, a true freshman that played last year uh, that I think is going to be a, an outstanding pass rusher for us. Uh, he played last year against Illinois. He played against the 335-pound tackle, right. and he was weighing 201 uh, as a defensive end. Uh, this year he's up to 230 pounds and, he, yeah, uh, he and he looks like, like two, a dude. Yeah, he was, he was skinny, 6'4 last year. Yep. And I thought this guy's skinny, but I thought he was the quickest pass rusher you have. Uh, I think he has a chance uh, for, for the years to come to be uh, you know, in that same breath as O'Shane Zimenez at, at Old Dominion, who I think is an outstanding pass rusher. Let's talk to Andre Ferris, defensive back, Conference USA honorable mention. 14 passes broken up last season, which was tops in the conference. Defensively, how strong are you guys this season? I think we're strong. I think we have a lot of depth in the back end, you know, from ones and twos. I think, you know, we have a lot of guys that can step up and play. You know, we have a lot of speed. You know, coach puts us in position to make plays. So I think, you know, this season, you know, we should have a very productive year. 
Turnover margin, though, was, was about minus eight. Mm -hmm. How important is it to get more turnovers this season? It's, it's, it's critical. You know, Coach, Coach stresses us that we have to be more opportunistic when the ball's in the air. Um, making plays and getting the ball back to our offense is, is key, you know, key to winning games. Now, you got a lot of guys joining you in the backfield. You have three defensive backs, if I'm not mistaken, coming back from last season starting. How good is that because as we see some of the defensive plays being made, including the interception there, how important is it because now you guys – have a sense of feel for each other back Yes, there. sir. Uh, I think it's important because, you know, we are we are veterans in the back end, and, you know, we can coach up those young guys and, and develop a culture that, you know, like Coach says, you know, being opportunistic when the ball's in the air, you know, we need to develop that. And, you know, like I said, I think it's important that, you know, we do have vets in the back end, and I think it's great that we can make plays. Now you went to the fourth straight bowl game last year, but you came up on the short end against Georgia State in the uh, Auto Nation Cure Bowl. Did that leave a bad taste in both you guys' mouth? First of all, you. Yes, sir. I think it did because, you know, we were better than what we displayed. You know, we're better than what we put on film. You know, I think it's the positive that we come, that we get from it is, you know, it gives us a chip on our shoulder to be able to go out and compete and, you know, put our best foot forward to win games this upcoming year. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can agree right with uh, Dre Ferris. Um, I feel like you always got a bad taste in your mouth when you feel like you don't, you don't, put your best foot out there and, and you know that you can do better. Uh, and I feel like we, we're going to take all that uh, from this past year and keep that rolling into the this season. How about it? It was tough, wasn't it? I yeah. Mean, here you get to a ball and then you go. Ugh. It was. And, and, you know, we were we were hanging on by a thread physically. Um, you know, that's just a that's a, you know, 24 surgeries postseason. Um, that was amazing when I read. That. Yeah, it's, it, it was a challenge. Um, and uh, like I said, I, I think we're going into this season um, physically feeling like like we are ready uh, for the grind uh, 14 games we want to play 14 games that's that's a goal of ours mm -hmm. do having our power to play 14 games and um, you know uh, leaning heavily on on the dre ferris those types of senior leaders uh, you heard you heard dre talk about coaching yeah. uh, coaching the young players uh, you know i offered dre ferris a ga job and he's still playing <laughs> uh, <laughs> true statement yeah. oh that's, <laughs> that's funny that's we're funny. walking down the hallway and, and i watched dre you know the maturity of, yeah. of, of, of him as a player but also just looking out for the young players. That's awesome. Um, he's out there coaching individual. He's out there coaching uh, meetings, running meetings. Lucky's doing the same thing with the receivers. Um, we want our players to take that ownership of leadership. We put them in those positions. Uh, and, and everything's about going forward to 2018. Use 2017 and learn from the mistakes. But we, we as a team feel like we're in such a different place going into this coming season. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about special teams real quickly because you're, you're missing a punter. you got to find a punter, a kickoff return guy. Where does that situation stand? Uh, you know, we made some great changes in special teams uh, going, you know, to starting in spring spring practice. Uh, two, you know, kind of lifers in the special teams world, and, and Jamie Deberry and Maurice right. Crum are now co co coordinating special special teams. And uh, you know, Maurice Crum was an NFL special teams player. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a passion for it. He's a great teacher. Jamie De Deberry, he's been a coordinator in special teams. So those guys are working great. That's going to be a strength of our team. I really do believe that. I tell you, it's, it was fun watching you the last year, and I, I couldn't believe all the injuries you had, the postseason surgeries, but. It's going to be upwards and better now. No, hey, this team has been calloused and coarse, and uh, we got warriors. Uh, we got guys that are ready for uh, for 2018 because of what did happen in 17 was adversity. Uh, but uh, man, you go through that; those types of things they make you so much stronger and they prepare you for for what lies ahead. And uh, you know, Hilltopper Nation's got something to be excited about coming forward uh, in these next few years. And you, do you realize now that every uh, place I go and speak to teams, I'm going to mention the fact that there was actually a player that wanted the lights on. On a Saturday night at 9:45 to play catch. <laughs> and it was how many how many players total were out there? Uh, I think four total, maybe. Yeah, it's four. Yeah, so we're Mike Juan Dean. Uh, I thought I didn't have a Decor social life. I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, I'm impressed. Of course, they don't go out till like one in the morning anyway. <laughs> I'm impressed no, that, with that. That was the appetizer. <laughs> yeah, that was the appetizer <laughs> exactly. Yeah, get, get a little sweat on yeah. before I go out. Oh, okay, get that glisten going. <laughs> yeah, really. Gentlemen, thank you, Mike. Always Ron, good to see I appreciate you, my friend. it. We look forward to seeing you during the season.